1859. Here we have the Lickawalla Swamp. It's huge, twice the size of Scotland. It is 55,000 square miles, 80% still unexplored in, in 21st century. Who knows what all could be in there? What's really amazing is flying reptiles are supposed to have been extinct for 65 million years, but they're mentioned by Aristotle, Strabo, and Herodotus. Aristotle said it was common knowledge that they were alive in Ethiopia in his day. Anybody who didn't believe that, he said, was simply uneducated. Strabo gave an eyewitness account of them being in ancient India in his day, and Herodotus gave a lengthy eyewitness account of them being in ancient Egypt, where he said they were hated and despised and killed whenever they were found. He said their bleached bones were found strewn across the Egyptian desert sand because everybody hated them. Well, no wonder they aren't there anymore. But they do appear to be alive and well in Papua New Guinea. Many people, hundreds of witnesses, including government officials, foreign missionaries, people whose credibility is beyond dispute, have seen these creatures. The government has issued challenges for foreign scientists, experts in capturing dangerous live animals to come to New Guinea. They promise to give them at least six permits, allowing them to capture six living pterodactyls if they can. They have to turn two of them over to the government, but they're allowed to keep four and export them even to foreign countries. Imagine that. We could have pterodactyls in the San Diego Zoo. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, so far, most scientists haven't taken it seriously. But the government is very, very uh, serious about it. They feel they don't care if this gives a black eye to Darwin's theory. They figure, by golly, uh, this is our national treasure. This is going to put us on the map. This is going to give us fame and fortune and tourism. And so they want it to be done. We do have uh, some creationist expeditioners gearing up at this time, raising money. I know personally one creationist who's gone there already privately and has seen one. He said that they glide, they dive faster than a falcon, over 200 miles an hour. He said you could not believe the speed that these things have. They have finally located, they believe, a cave where they're living. And that's better than we've ever had before. So we need to pray that, they, that we'll be able to mount another expedition, that the creationists will be blessed by God to get this documentation. Now, don't go out and say there's dinosaurs in the Congo and pterodactyls in New Guinea. It has not been proven beyond equivocation, but we could be about this close. And it's something we need to pray because, you know, evolution is the most successful lie the devil has ever spawned. And he does not like this type of evidence coming out. There really is a spiritual battle here. So I encourage you to pray and let's believe God for some amazing end time revelations. Revelations that will show that the Bible is true, not only trustworthy historically about animals, dinosaurs, pterodactyls, but the Bible can be trusted about the history of man, that man is not a worthless product of chance, that he is made in the image of God, that we are so valuable even in our fallen sinful state, that the Creator would pay the infinite price of the blood of his Son, that we could have eternal life. That's what's really important about the truth of the Bible. Well, I thank you very much for your attention. You've been wonderful. We've run out of time, and I hope we'll see you back at the book table and take advantage of some of the materials. Thank you.